Hello everyone, my name is Nagura and today I got a TLDR Season 4 Dungeon Guide for you. Today we're going to be talking about Upper Carson, but I'm also uploading all the other Season 4 Dungeon Guides on my YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. Alright, let's get into it. At the start of the dungeon, interrupt the cast stole leech of the forlorn spirits because it heals them otherwise. In Legion, most teams ended up skipping these two spirits with Shroud because they weren't very efficient to deal with, but if one of them has the Season 4 affix Shrouded, then I'd assume it's worth to kill them to get an early stat buff. All the way up the stairs, there's a Shrieking Terror, casting Terrifying Wail, fearing everyone if not interrupted, so watch out for that. Both the spirits and the terrors are undead, so they can be mind-controlled by DKs. In Legion, DKs would mind-control the terror upstairs, then move into the first room and release the spirit to kill it off while fighting the damage golems for efficiency. The damage golems channel a cast, spawning swirlies all over the room in a 30 yard radius. If you pull both of them at the same time, you could get overwhelmed by the swirlies. But a trick is to tank the golems on the stairs and let the melee players stay on the side of the stairs. It seems to be spawning less or no swirlies there at all. And range players can outrange the whole mechanic. The next mob is an abstract nullifier. This mob does a lot of magic damage to a tank, so be careful. Additionally, the mob silences a random player and puts a circle of purple orbs somewhere in the room. You have to walk into the orbs to remove the silence. In the first boss room, there are a bunch of big elementals and smaller worms. The elementals have a shield on them that needs to be DPS through. Otherwise, you cannot interrupt the arcane barrage cast, which does AoE damage to the whole group. You can use line of sight to avoid the damage of arcane barrage if you don't manage to kill the shield fast enough. The first boss is the Curator, and he puts zones underneath each player periodically that persist throughout the whole fight, so you have to manage the available room properly. If everyone in your group reacts fast enough, you can stack up and move together to preserve space. Additionally, the boss also spawns sparks that need to be killed because they deal damage to random players. Whenever the boss is out of mana, it will cast Evocation, and during this channel the boss takes 100% increased damage, so you should save your offensive cooldowns for it. Next up there's an infused Pyromancer. He spawns fell orbs in a room that will explode after 15 seconds, but players can stand close to them to drain them and prevent the explosion, so make sure you do that. Additionally, there are fell bats flying in the air, shooting swirlers at players. If the tank taunts them, they will fly to the ground and can be killed. Watch out for the fire breath frontal they cast towards the tank. In the last room before the second boss, there's a Wrathguard Flamebringer. This mob does a frontal cleave and sometimes teleports behind the tank, so melee have to watch out. Additionally, the floor will also have burning tiles, so make sure to dodge out of them. This mob can be hard to see, so you can stun it after it teleports to prevent weird frontals, or you can also completely skip the mob with step or imprison. The second boss is Shade of Mediv. This boss can be really difficult to deal with and also has a lot of mechanics to remember. I will go over all of them because I think it's important to understand the fight, so bear with me. During the normal phase, the boss casts three different spells. Arcane Missiles, Frostbite and Inferno Bolt, all of which can be interrupted. Arcane Missiles are always cast on a tank, but it does a lot of damage and if channeled all the way through, leaves a damage taken increased debuff behind. So this spell needs to be interrupted as the highest priority. The second most important cast to interrupt is Frostbite, as it puts a random non-tank player into an ice block. And the last ability is Inferno Bolt. A random player will have a fire circle around them, dealing magic damage and leaving behind a dot to anyone standing in a circle. This fireball frees players out of an ice block, so make sure to help your friends if they're in a block. Quick tip for Inferno Bolt. This ability has a travel time, so you can actually avoid getting hit by it by moving far away from the boss and using any kind of movement ability, even something like sprint can be enough. Once Medivh reaches full mana, he will enter another phase, either Ceaseless Winter, Flame Breathe, or Guardian's Image. It's random which phase he goes into. During Ceaseless Winter, the room will be covered in ice. If you stand still, a dot will stack up on you, doing more and more damage. You can remove the stacks by moving or jumping. The boss will continue casting his three main abilities during this phase, so keep interrupting. If Medivh casts Flame Wreath, two players will have a fire ring around them. If the players move out of the ring or anyone else moves into the ring, the ring will explode, dealing fatal damage. So make sure everyone is spread out as the rings get applied, and make sure to interrupt Frostbites if they target the Flame Wreath players, because you can't free them out of the ice block without stepping onto the ring. The last possible phase is Guardian's Image. 
The boss will disappear and spawn three guardian images at the edge of the room. You have to kill all three of them to make the boss reappear. The images deal heavy damage and the longer they are alive, the more damage everyone takes. It's usually better to focus one image down immediately and then move on to reduce the overall damage taken. After the ultimate phase, he will go back into the normal phase and cast another ultimate phase once he has full mana again. Now in the next boss room, there are spiders, rats and flying books. All of these mobs are somewhat dangerous to pull together because the spider roots players in place with a web and the rats create a wall of rats you need to dodge. The root can be dispelled though and also interrupted with stuns. So as long as no one gets rooted in a bad spot, it's fine. Additionally, the leech cast from the spiders should be stunned as well or dispelled by the healer to make sure the spiders don't heal. The third boss is Mana Devourer. This boss spawns orbs around the boss and the orbs give the boss mana if they reach him. If he gets full mana, then he casts a deadly explosion, so you need to make sure to soak as many orbs as possible. The orbs leave behind a stacking dot that does a lot of damage but also increases your damage done. The only way to remove them is to use immunities or stand in the void zones on the ground. But the void zones also deal a lot of damage while standing in them. In Legion most groups tank the boss in a corner to make sure a lot of the orbs spawn on top of each other, so either the tank or an immunity class could soak as many as possible. But if you can handle some of the dots, it would be beneficial to have them on the damage dealers to increase their damage. In the next room there are a lot of mini versions of the mana devourer. They have the same abilities as the boss, so the best way to deal with them is pulling them all together and move them into the corridor. If you keep moving, the orbs will all come from the same side and are easier to soak. On the bridge to the chest event, there are fell bats shooting green swirlies at you and the first mob has a frontal cleave with a knock. Be careful as it can knock you off the bridge. Then there's another pyromancer with the same abilities as the one after the first boss. Make sure to interrupt and soak the fell orbs. Next up is the chess event. The goal is to kill the king, but the king can only be damaged for 30 seconds after you kill off any other chess mob first. So you need to focus down another mob and then damage the king, and rinse and repeat. Keep in mind the damage phase of the king does not stack or extend, so there's no reason to finish off multiple mobs at the same time. All of the mobs don't have to be tanked and also don't use any normal abilities, but once in a while one of the mobs starts a chess move. Each mob will use a corresponding chess move to move to a different tile, and when they land they will light up the tiles depending on their valid moves. For example, the queen will move to a different tile, either diagonal or the same column or row. Once she lands, she will light up all tiles diagonal to her and all tiles in the same column and row. The rook does the same thing but with only columns and rows. The bishop lights up all diagonal lines and the knights will jump to a position in an L shape and then light up individual tiles from that position in an L shape as well. You usually have enough time to move out of the tiles as long as you are prepared for them, so you just need to be quick on your feet. The last boss has three phases, they trigger at 66 and 33% of the boss's health. He has three core mechanics he keeps throughout all the phases. This integrate will target a random player and then cast a huge beam towards them. Make sure you don't get caught in it. Chaotic Shadows is a magic debuff he applies to random players. Once it runs out or is removed, shadow orbs will form around the player and move out in a straight line. If anyone gets hit by an orb, it explodes and does heavy damage. If you get multiple debuffs, it's usually best to have your healer dispel one of the debuffs early to make sure they don't run out at the same time and have multiple players spawn orbs at the same time. And the last core mechanic is Burning Blast, an interruptible tank cast that leaves a dot behind. Make sure to drop this cast once in a while so your tank can reset the stacks. In phase 2 you will have to reach the boss to start the phase, but be careful not to get hit by Disintegrate or the Fell Lightning on the sides. And in the last phase there are Fell Guard sentries. These should be round up by the tank and someone should interrupt the boss's Stabilize Rift cast. If not interrupted the boss will spawn a lot of Fell Guards and you might get overwhelmed. The Fell Guards don't do too much tank damage, but you still might want to deal with them periodically to relieve the tank. Other than that, you just have to deal with the three core mechanics of the boss. And that's it. I hope this guide helped you out and I wish you all the best of fun and best of luck in the season 4 dungeons. See you guys on stream. Have a nice day. Goodbye!